Hello guys, so today I'm going to show you how I made this necklace. Finally, 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 I found those big beads. So these are 6mm seed beads and I decided to make this necklace using these beads so you can see. Now, I'm going to show you what this looks like when I hold the other necklace that I made, which is smaller. And you can see that this necklace is actually very, very big and the beads are way bigger which means it takes less time to make than this other necklace with smaller beads. Hey guys, did you miss me? I'm back. So I'm looking for this photo and this photo has the exact same size beads that I'm going to use today. I made this whole costume by myself for an African choir that I was a part of a while ago. I'm just going to mix the colors up because obviously I don't have the exact same colors and I like trying new different colors. Anywho, let me explain why I have been MIA. Firstly, I could not find beads. Please let me know guys, if you are in Sydney, let me know where I can find beads because I'm really struggling. You see these white beads that I've just put? I bought that packet of 100 for $2. That was a long time ago from a supplier on aliexpress so guys please if you know where i can find these beads please hook a girl up let me know where i can buy beads in bulk because this is the problem this is why i'm not producing any content because i have limited supply of beads anyway to start my necklace as usual i'm making my beaded ball and i have this green bead which is 10 millimeters and i've loaded six two millimeter beads and i just put the needle through the bead like that And then I'm going to continue to do the same. So I'll load on my needle six small beads and then I'll put it through my bead. So as you can see, the needle is going from the bottom and it's coming out on the top. And then I'll do the same six more and then I'll put the needle from the bottom and it'll come out through the top. So I'll do this six times. And this is the sixth one. So this is the last load of six that I'm doing. And from now, I'm going to put five beads. And I'm going in through the gaps. See where the gaps are? And I'm trying to feed the five beads through the gaps. I find that this technique makes my beaded ball even. So it won't clump up and I won't have too many beads. So see how I'm pulling the beads to the side. I'm separating them to the side with my thumb. So that gap where my thumb is, that's where this five set of beads is going to sit. And then I'm just looking for more gaps. And so I'm loading my five beads and then I'll cover that gap and I'll keep doing it until the whole bead is covered. And so I have a tiny gap left and I'm just going to push the beads to the side and I'm loading my final set of five beads. And once they're in, I just straighten the beads and make sure they're quite even. This is what I have left. So this is how to make the ball that's going to hold my beads together. And then after that, I'm going to switch to my big beads. Well, I decided to wax my thread 
as you saw earlier while i was making my beaded bow my thread was tangling up and so i use this wax to condition my thread and that helps to reduce any entanglements so i've decided to start with green for this necklace and so i'm just loading these green beads onto my thread and i'm just going to try and get as much as possible because i want them to be um, the same length as my neck and to get the right measurement i'm going to use my other necklace which i made remember this one this is my favorite necklace so far so i'm going to use that one because it has the exact same length that i need for my neck So at this point, I've decided to put the small green beads and I'm going to use them to make the loop-de-loops, which is where the beaded boy is going to go through. By all means, you do not need to use small beads on this part. The picture that I showed you earlier, I actually used the big beads throughout the whole necklace. I just want to use the small beads just because it looks neater. But when I pull them, look at the difference in size between these green beads and then the small green beads. Whoa. So from memory, I put 45 small beads up to this point. And then now I'm going to curve the beads around. So I start making the loop and I'm putting 15 beads and then they will act as my beads that will start curving. So I've loaded 15 beads and I'm going to curve it and where it meets the other 15 beads, that's where I'll put my needle through the bead that's already there. And so that's how I make the first loop. And for the second and third loop, I'm going to count the beads and see how many beads I have and then I'll just divide the number by two. And so I'll end up just loading half the number that I got. And then I'll recount to see whether I have the right number of beads. And then I'll just put my needle through that half of the bead. So just watch what I'm doing. It's easier for me to show than to explain sometimes. okay here we go so this is the final of the small beads and i'll just put it through that big bead and so this is what we have you can see that it's the same size as my other necklace and i'll just put this away and i'll start the beading process now before i explain the beading let me just explain this whole line that you see in front of me so this line of beads that i've done is the measurement of a standard neck size and the three loops that you see represents the three sizes that someone might need. So that's small, medium, or large. If a person has a small neck, they will wear the necklace on the first loop, which is small. If they have a bigger neck, they will wear the necklace on the medium loop. And if the person has a thicker neck, they can wear the necklace using the last hole. So when you make this necklace, make sure that you get the right measurements for your neck and then put the extra loops so that you can adjust your necklace when you wear it. Sometimes I like to wear my necklace on the middle hole just because it's not as tight. It makes it loose and it drops down a bit. So just make sure you put the extra allowance when you do this. Okay, so I was already starting my necklace and I was ready to just get it on. And then I realized I made a mistake, but I decided to keep this mistake here because someone might learn from it. As you can see, I've put my beads. I'm not going to count because there's a mistake. And I was ready to just go with it. Remember when I told you last time that you need 
odd numbers to do this necklace if you have even numbers it won't work so if you see i've got green pink and then i've got that turquoise red and then a blue and yellow that makes them even numbers so that's one two three four five six six levels and so i was going ahead with my beading enjoying life and i thought my colors were flowing and then just as i was about to turn and go back return up that's when i realized so soon after here that's when i realized oops i made a mistake because if you do this with even numbers your necklace won't be even so it's a bit annoying it is a bit annoying but that is the part where i decided to count and i realized i am so dumb i can't do it and then i had to restart again so let's just take all these beads off and then i'll start again okay so we're doing it the right way now and because i don't have a seventh color i'm going to put yellow in the middle and i'm going to repeat the yellow at the end So this is how I've done this first line. I've put two green beads, a white separating bead, three pink beads, a white separating bead, four turquoise beads, a white separating bead, five yellow beads, a white separating beads, six red beads, a white separating bead, seven blue beads, a white separating bead, and eight yellow beads. So I've increased each level by one bead. And then when I get to the bottom, I've put four white beads so to get the nice perfect star at the end i take my needle and i place it through the first of the four white beads so the first one that's next to the color and then i pull my needle and you can see it gives that sort of diamond shape and then now i'm gonna go back up so if you noticed that first line when i was beading my needle was going down this time because i'm going up my needle will be pointing up so now I'm loading the exact same number of beads as I already did. So eight yellow beads. And because this is the first one, I'm going to put a white separating bead and then I'll put seven blue beads. So I like to count and just make sure that everything is even because you don't want your necklace to have more beads on one side than the other. And because this is my first diamond, after the blue, my needle goes through that white separating bead. Now for the second diamond, I'm putting six red beads and then I'll put a white bead and then I'll put five yellow beads and I'll connect them onto the white bead that's already on the yellow side and that will make my second diamond. And then the third diamond, I will put four turquoise beads, one white bead, and three pink beads. And then I'll connect onto the white bead that's next to the pink, already on the necklace, and that will make my third diamond. And you see here, I'm only left with green, so I need to load two green beads and then connect it to the main line that makes the necklace. This is the point where you actually need odd numbers because if they were even you wouldn't be able to have this last row so make sure make sure you have odd numbers so after loading my two green beads i just count three beads one two three and then i put my needle through the fourth bead so this is what it looks like it's so nice and snug and neat so now i'm gonna bead going back down so my needle will point downwards and i'm loading two green beads 
a white bead and then three pink beads and then it will go through the white bead that's already on next to the pink so when you do this design as i mentioned when you're going up your needle will point up and when you're going down your needle will point down when you put the colors you put two colors at a time so here i've put green and pink with a white separating bead in the middle and then i'll attach these beads onto my necklace using the white bead that's already there so two colors at a time green and pink which i've done and it's gone through the white white bead that's already there next i'm going to do two colors turquoise and yellow and i'll do the turquoise first a white separating bead and then the yellow and then i'll join those two colors onto the white separating bead that's already there so if you remember that sequence you'll be able to make this necklace with no problem So here you should already know what I'm going to do next. I'm going to put the red beads and then the white separating beads and then the blue beads and I'll join them in through the white bead that's already there. And the end of the necklace, I'll put my eight yellow beads and straight away I'll put my four white beads and then I'll turn it into a diamond. If you've forgotten, let me just refresh you. So I like to pull the tension before I do anything. And so my needle goes in through the first of the four white beads. And now my needle is pointing up. So I'm going to be beading going up. And I'm going to start loading my eight yellow beads, my white separating bead, and then my seven turquoise beads. So by now you guys should know how I do this necklace. I'm just going to forward the video and I'll talk when it's necessary. So just watch what I'm doing. Sometimes it makes sense when you're watching. If you have any questions, please, please, please do not hesitate to pop them in the comment section and I will try and answer your question in the next video. I just want to say if you want to try and make these necklaces that i make just try and use these big beads because it is easier to bead using the big beads and once you get the hang of it you can adjust to smaller size beads so these beads are six millimeters in size i wish i'd said it at the beginning i'm sorry but i've put it in the description as well this whole necklace took me about an hour to get to here and then another half an hour to finish the whole necklace now i'll show you what i do when my thread is finishing because that's one of the questions that was in the comment section so i just like to turn my necklace to the side because it's just easier for me to manage it's now big and i make sure that i remember the point where my 
thread has ended so that's the part where the blue and the yellow meets and i like to just go down and up through the necklace and then tie some knots so i've just gone down that yellow beads and here i'm just gonna tie my first knot and once i do that i'm gonna take my needle and i'm gonna go up that yellow line of beads and then i'll turn and go down that yellow line of beads and i'll try and tie a second knot and i'll try and do at least three or four knots that way my necklace will not unravel so just watch what i'm doing And so now I'm running out of thread. So I'm going to tie my final knot here. And then I'm just going to cut this thread. And I'll just recap. So this is where my thread ended. We went down. I tied a knot. Up. Down. Tied a knot. Up. And then down. And I tied my final knot. And now I'm just cutting it off. And I've got a fresh new needle with some fresh thread. And this is the right needle that I normally use, which is a big, big, big needle. And so what I do is I go onto the fourth white diamond. And I tie my thread onto that fourth diamond. And so that's how I begin. And I make sure it's tied really well and secure. And then I cut off the little excess thread because I just don't like hanging thread. And then so I take my needle and I start beading up and I just keep going up, down, up, down until I get back to the point where my thread ran out. So just watch what I'm doing. I love this needle. This is my best needle, especially when I'm using these big beads. Obviously, it won't fit in the smaller beads, so I hardly ever use it when I'm using the small beads. And I will say long thread is annoying. It's very annoying because it tangles up. But if you put short threads and you keep tying knots and knots and knots, it actually makes your necklace more weaker. So that means each time you add new thread, that part that you add a new thread, there's a chance that it might break. And so that makes the necklace very weak. So I like to struggle with these long long thread just because it makes it more secure so in this whole necklace i've only added thread twice so this is the second time i've added thread and it just makes life easier when you have a long thread so here at this point i'm tying my second knot So please note, you can tie your knots anywhere within the necklace. I just prefer to do it at the beginning, like at the start, where those white designs are. But even in the middle of the necklace, you can tie a knot. And so now I'm taking my needle and it's going to go down. So we went down again and I'm going to tie another knot on here. I don't usually do this because I've already tied a knot here before, but because my thread is not very thick, I can get away with tying a second knot on the same place. And then now we're going to go up to where my thread had ended. So I need to make sure my needle comes out before the white bead. And so that's basically how you add 
new thread. So we're now back to where we were when the thread ended. And I'm just gonna continue with my yellow beads and finish off this necklace. As I explained, it took me one and a half hours to do the whole thing. When I usually use the smaller beads, it takes me three or four hours over two days. But with this one, I can just do it in one sitting because the beads are big and it's quite easy and straightforward for me. So now I'm just measuring to see whether I need to continue or finish off here and I've decided to finish off my necklace here. So instead of putting my needle going the way that I was going, I'm putting my needle going back into the necklace. And to finish off, I'm just going to do the same method that I used when my thread was running out. I'm just going to go in, up, down, up, down, haphazardly and then I'll tie a couple of knots and then once I'm happy, I'll just cut off the thread. So I like to go through that whole top line just because it makes it all even and it makes it straight. And then now I'm going to tie my first knot and then I'm going to start going down into the necklace in all different direction. And then I'll tie knots and then once I'm satisfied, I will cut the thread. Okay, so that's the thread done. Now I'm left with this thread that we had at the beginning. Remember when we made our ball, we had that thread, the little piece of thread. I've just put the small needle in and I'm just gonna go in through the tiny beads and I'm just gonna secure this thread. I'll tie a couple of knots and then I'll go back up into that beaded ball and secure that thread again. And once I'm satisfied, I'm just gonna snip it off. So there we go that's the necklace complete this is what it looks like and i'll just put it on another table so you can see clearly the colors and here is the smaller necklace that i made you can see it's pretty small and you can see the size of beads actually matter see how different they are in size yeah So this necklace that I've just done today is not for me, it's for a friend. So I'm going to make a matching belt, which you'll see in the next video coming up. And as you can see, I already started the belt. However, I ran out of these beads and I'm just trying to get a hold of the same beads. So wish me luck, guys. So if you want to see this beaded belt and my necklace together, stay tuned for my next video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss out on any of